what up what up jeff joe's are back with another video listen today's video is a highly requested video on how to get started in the box trucking game so but for those of you who are going to want a more detailed experience i created the link that's in the description below where you get to talk to me for about 45 minutes to an hour about everything that i know everything that i've experienced and answer any of your questions that might help you with your learning curve so i don't know how long it's going to be there i don't really know how many i'm going to do but the link is there for those of you who are interested um, it is in the description below also for those of you who are new to the channel first of all go ahead and subscribe right now like and share this video because it really helps me out a lot and it's free you get to do a good thing and no one's gonna know how would they know <laughs> but um, on top of that I'm also gonna do a cash giveaway if you want to know more about that and it's your first time hearing about it check out the other videos um, I'm doing a cash giveaway as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers talk about how to get started on my break for now I'm about to hop in the box joint and I'm about to hit Chicago. And when I get to my break, I'm gonna to talk to y'all about everything that you need to know. Now, I'm just not going back over the road. I tried to stay local. I tried to stay in Louisiana for a while uh, and run Amazon, but it just didn't work out. Amazon is trash, as y'all already know how I feel about Amazon. Um, it didn't work out. I couldn't stay local because they kept canceling my loads at random and they don't wanna pay me for the truck order not used. So. Long story short, it wasn't working out. I tried to find some other ways to get paid, some dedicated routes. Um, I reached out to some local businesses and things like that to uh, get some local dedicated work and stuff like that. Um, but they're not paying that much money. So I have to go where the money is. And right now that is over the road. And more specifically, it is in the Midwest. So I am currently on a load that is going from where I am in Knoxville, Tennessee, just got loaded, and I'm going to Chicago. And it's low, it's a high load, it's paying uh, $2.30 a mile, uh, but really this is a repositioning load. It's not really, a, I'm not gonna say it's not about the money because it's always about the money, but it's more so to get in position for, um, to be able to make way more money in the Midwest. Uh, so that's the reason why I was most interested in this load. Now normally I would talk more about the load, but more importantly, I had a DOT inspection today on the box joint, right? Uh, I had the DOT inspection and I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous. Like, <laughs> But I played it cool. Uh, I went in there with my Southern charm, you know, finessing. I went in there with my binder, gave him everything that they asked for with a smile. It was friendly. I was talking to him. I was engaging with him and um, came back. No violations. I don't know if that's because there was no violations or because they thought I was a cool guy. <laughs> I'm grateful either way. However it worked out, it worked out. What I'm going to say is make sure that you have your stuff in order with the DOT. Don't play with these people, y'all. Make sure you have a binder. Make sure you have everything they ask for. Make sure you that your ELD log is plugged in and accurate because they definitely gonna check that thing. So, but that's it for now, y'all. Like I said, I'm gonna talk about how to get started on my break. But now, I'm about to hop in the box joint and I'm about to hit Chicago. And when I get to my break, I'm gonna talk to y'all about everything that you need to know. So I'll see y'all on the road. y'all so it is a whole new day and i have made it to chicago uh getting up here was a breeze and that's exactly what i'm about to do with this information about the breeze right on through as efficiently as possible again for those of you who want more detailed information or if you need help 
or want help with any of your stuff, just click the link in the description below and um, let's talk, let's, let's schedule a call. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that you're gonna need is to set up your LLC. Now you could do this under your own name and 1099 the whole thing, but that's not wise because if something happens, they can come after all your personal assets. Make sure that you get an LLC in the state that you wanna do business in. In most states, it's about $100. Some states are a little bit more expensive. Um, I decided to start this business out of Houston uh, so Texas is about $300, but most other places uh, are usually about $100. Texas can do is a little bit more complicated because you gotta have a registered agent and uh, their website is not user friendly. Uh, so you can use a Google uh, different websites that'll actually set the business up for you. You can do this on your own. They might charge a fee, they might um, not. I recommend if you do use a website to uh, file for you, I recommend Zen Business. Other than that, first step, is to get your LLC. The next step is gonna be your EIN. Now you can absolutely do this on your own. It is free and it's easy. It takes you all the five minutes to do. All you gotta do is go to the irs.gov website and fill out your information and they'll give you uh, a EIN number. Basically that's the social security number for your business. You can do that right away. It takes all the five minutes. Do not get swim boozled into paying for something that is free and easy to do. I'm telling you now, all you gotta do is go to the IRS website and fill out a form that takes all the five minutes to do. And you have a, a EIA number for your business before the Secretary of State even approves your business, okay? So that's step number two. Right, so once you have your EIN number, you can then go to the FMCSA website and apply for your authority. Okay, your authority is what allows you to do business, gives you your DOT number, your MC number, and it takes about 21 days for it to go active. And there's some stuff you gotta do before then, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Apply for your authority, it takes maybe 45 minutes to an hour to fill out. Um, it's gonna cost $300. If it costs anything more than $300, then you didn't do something right. But once you finish, finish your authority on the FMCSA website, go back to the FMCSA website because the next step, you have to apply for your MCS 150. Well, you don't have to apply for it. It's basically registering uh, your business with them and also verifying the information that you just submitted to apply for your authority. So you do that on the FMCSA website. Now you're on to the next step. The next step is for you to open up a business bank account. Just a little side note for those of you who don't know, you do not have a business if you do not have a business bank account. The government does not recognize your business without a business bank account. So you have to go open up a business bank account. Um, I recommend that you open up a business bank account with a credit union if you already have one or if you can get in one, I recommend a credit union. If not, Capital One is your next best bet because they're the easiest to get going. You're gonna have to go into a branch pretty much across the board no matter who you go to. In most cases, you only have to put a deposit depends on the bank that you go to. If you go to Capital One, the deposit might be anywhere between 150 to 200, maybe even $300. So you research where you go. Um, but usually most banks for business bank accounts, especially that you, you have to put in some deposit depending on what type of business bank account that you open, okay? Next thing you gotta do, you gotta go get your DOT medical card, right? Even though in most cases, you're probably gonna be doing non-CDL, you still have to be driving a commercial vehicle. So therefore, you have to have a DOT medical card. They cost anywhere between $65 to $120. Go with the cheapest place that you can find. It's, they all say the same thing. The average, I think, is about $90. Um, but there are places that do it for less. It's all the same information. So, all right, so all those things you could probably do within a week. You could probably do it within a couple of days, depending on how soon your Secretary of State approves your business. Um, you cannot open a business bank account without having your Secretary of State's approval and having uh, you know, the documents that they're gonna need. I forget the exact name of them, but you have to basically have everything come back from the state first before you can open up a business bank account. All those things should take you a week to do. If you're really ambitious, you could probably do it in a day depending on your state. But it's gonna take you about a week to do all of those things at best. Next, you wanna get a truck. Now, so you can either buy your truck, you can lease your truck, or you can rent your truck, okay? If you buy your truck, then you have a lot of overhead expense, okay? Don't recommend, I don't necessarily recommend buying a truck. The only thing I would say is that you would keep more money in your pocket monthly, but you're still gonna have that debt over years, you know, 30, 40,000 dollars. 
uh, that's just hanging over your head, especially if you decide that you don't want to be in the business anymore, you want to sell the truck, you got to wait to sell the truck, it's a hassle. So I recommend leasing the truck, which is what I'm currently doing. I am leasing a truck. Um, it is a little bit more of an overhead expense for the month, but I think it's worth it. If you lease the vehicle, you get a good deal on the truck, you get a good reliable truck, and oftentimes they come with perks. Uh, for maintenance and things like that that you don't necessarily have to worry about now if you rent a truck it's the least risk you have to worry about almost nothing in terms of what happens with the truck because if something go wrong you just give it back to them right but it is going to be the most expensive weekly i mean right now i think with Ryder, you're looking at easily twenty two hundred dollars a week so that's going to cut into your profits now it's up to you to decide what you want you know, I recommend either leasing or renting, uh, especially for those of you who are brand new to trucking, don't know anything about trucking or logistics. I recommend that you do not buy a truck, especially not a box truck, because you might decide three months in that, hey, now I'm gonna go get my CDL and hop in a, in a 53 footer or something like that. And you don't wanna be stuck with a box truck that you don't even want or that's not working out for you. You might decide you wanna go do something else. So I recommend leasing or renting. Next, you have to do your UCR. Okay, your unified carrier registration. Now what that is, is letting the FMCSA know how many trucks that you have running, right? It costs you about $65 every year. It's an annual fee. You only have to pay for it once a year. $65, let them know how many trucks that you have going. Well, $65 if you have less than two trucks. If you get more than two trucks, then you gotta submit another one. All right, once you do that, you can then do your BOC3. Your BOC3 is a third party agency that you can hire. Um, you can Google one that costs about $25 to $30, $45. I say go with the cheapest one because they're not going to do anything unless you're getting sued, right? They're the people that whoever's suing you are going to contact to make sure that you know you're being sued because you might get sued in a state other than which your business is registered in. So just to make sure that everything is fair, that they can contact you and whoever can contact you if they want to sue you. So they're the people that you got to hire. Hire the cheapest one and it's gonna be reported directly to the FMCSA. All right, so the second to last thing you wanna make sure that you have is an ELD monitor, okay? You have to have an ELD monitor if you're using a truck that was made after 1999. Now, I recommend going to Keep Trucking. They actually just changed their name to Motive or something weird like that. I don't know, but they're pretty good. They're about 40, I think $45 a month. Uh, it changes, depends on the agent that you get. I recommend that you negotiate uh, the best deal possible for you because it is a sales situation. So negotiate the best rate. Um, if you want, I'm gonna put my referral code in the description below to get you to uh, my guy. Hopefully that gets you some sort of discount. It's gonna bring you to my guy. And I recommend that you negotiate the best price for you. Uh, right now, I pay $40 a month and that was including with the equipment. And so, you know, it works for me. Now, the last thing you gotta get is your insurance. You wanna make sure that you have your insurance seven days prior to your authority becoming active. Again, your authority goes active 21 days after you submit it, 21 business days after you submit your application for authority. Do not wait to the 21st day to get your insurance because then you're gonna have to wait another seven days. Now you have up to 90 days in total to get your insurance and get all these things active. You wanna make sure all this stuff is done within the 21 days once you apply for your authority. You wanna have all this stuff already done. Now you have up to 90 days, but if you wait until after your 21 days is up to get your insurance, you got to wait seven days before your authority will actually go active. So you wanna make sure that you have your insurance at least seven days prior to your 21 day waiting period is up, okay? Now, one more thing about the insurance. So if you're trying to run Amazon Relay, then you're gonna need to get the million dollar insurance policy. The FMCSA only requests that you have 750,000 in liability and 100,000 in cargo, but Amazon requires that you have a million and there are actually uh, a few brokers out there that require you to have a million as well. But if you want to run Amazon, make sure that you have the $1 million liability and $100,000 cargo. Now, outside of your truck, your insurance is probably going to be uh, your most expensive startup cost. Uh, it totally is dependent upon your driving history, the state that you're in, and your credit situation in most cases. 
Um, if you're looking for inexpensive insurance, insurance, I recommend Progressive. They're kind of the leading edge in this space. Um, if you're looking for a cheaper down payment, I recommend Three Insurance. Uh, a link to their website will be in the description below. All right, so now that's everything that you're gonna need in order to start your box trucking business. Now they've got some things that you need in order to be successful in your box trucking business. And we can start with the straps, okay? You're gonna need straps. You can't go without the straps because stuff gets all kind of messed up if you don't have straps. And also load bars. If you can find some good load bars for cheap, get some load bars, they're not required but you definitely 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 have to have some straps okay next if you especially if you want to run amazon you're going to need a pallet jack you don't really need a pallet jack to do anything else because mostly of the loads that you get off the load boards or no touch freight um you know some places you go to they actually don't want to come on your truck so you actually have to move it to where it needs to go in order for all of the shipments to go on you know onto your truck so you're gonna need the pallet jack you can buy a used pallet jack, go to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, don't buy a new one because buying a new one is stupid. Get you a used, a good used pallet jack with good tires that works properly, okay? If you're one of those people that have to have everything new, I recommend going to Harper Freight. You can get a new one for about $330. It does the job. You're also gonna wanna get a fuel car because as you know, fuel is high and they give you discounts to get fuel at certain places, okay? Um, you're also gonna wanna get a factoring company. I recommend RTS. I can leave my person's information linked in the description below. Oftentimes the fuel card and the factoring can go together. It's up to you to decide what this is best for your situation. Um, the last two things you're gonna need, you're gonna wanna get some proper door signs and some binders, right? You wanna have a business binder, you wanna have a compliancy binder. Now what goes in a compliancy binder I'll let you know at another video, um, but you're also gonna wanna get some good door signs if you're leasing or renting a truck, then uh, I recommend getting magnet door signs, that's what I use. Uh, but if you're trying to keep costs down as much as possible, then you can get some cardboard or poster signs and some duct tape and duct tape it on the door. But you're gonna but need your MC and your DOT and your city name and the name of your business all displayed on the side of your vehicle both sides of your vehicle as per required for the DOT. So, all right, so that's everything that you're gonna need in order to start your box trucking business. Now, because I'm so nice, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a checklist of everything in the description below. Um, hopefully I can put some links on there, something that might help y'all, some stuff that might help y'all out. But other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and chill and relax until I can drop this load off tomorrow. Video is getting kind of long, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. I'm not gonna show y'all getting unloaded, but y'all already know what it's like to get unloaded. So other than that, I really do hope that this video was helpful. Again, if it was, please like and share, um, and also leave a comment with any feedback that you have. And I'll try to get back to you. And yeah, I'll catch y'all in the next one.